Morning all. All right, so starting off the day with something a little bit different. I usually start with a news video, but I'm going to start with the 32 team video. And it's going to be the annual look at the goalie carousel. Uh, so every summer, goaltenders get moved around. And it's always interesting because we never really know from one year to the next what we might get with a goaltender. Uh, as a for instance, Olmark. Olmark has an absolutely magical season through the regular season and ends up looking like the clear favorite to win the Vezina Trophy. If I'd predicted that last summer, people rightfully would have said, is he crazy? Yeah, I, I would have had to be crazy for that. Because while Olmark, I always figured, you know, good goaltender, I have an Olmark Sabres jersey. But yeah, I, I didn't see that coming. And yeah, it's been quite something to watch, hasn't it? That being said, uh, I want to talk about this too. Because right now there's rumors that Carter Hart might be on the move. Although there's nothing imminent. As soon as the Provorov deal went down and then discussions of whether or not Hart was on the move got out there it just it just blew up and I was like I'm not doing a video specifically on that let's do the goalie carousel video starting with the Pacific Division so yes uh, Pacific Division and in an alphabetical order it starts with Anaheim so John Gibson there's always the question of whether or not Gibson is going to remain in Anaheim Anaheim kind of you know in it at near the bottom of the league for the last few years and it would be understandable for Gibson to come out and say you know I'd like a chance to win in my prime uh, that's $6.4 million cap hit till 2027. Very palatable, really, honestly, for Gibson. Uh, his numbers have been down, but I don't put that on him. And I think that on a contending team, he would have a very big bounce back season. So that's $6.4 million if they decide to move it. I think there would be a taker. But I think that'll be up to Gibson. I don't think the Ducks have any interest in trading Gibson. But we'll see. Uh, Dostal I have there as the backup because I thought he played well enough this year to warrant that backup position. He's currently a restricted free agent. I would think probably a two-year deal. Probably similar to like uh, what uh, Vladar gets in Calgary. So let's talk about Calgary a little bit. Markstrom, $6 million till 2026. Vladar, $2.2 million till 2025. And that's your tandem. But wait, Dustin Wolf has shown that he may be ready. $813,000 cap hit till next year. He's a restricted free agent next summer. They have re-signed Oscar Dansk for the Wranglers. My guess is Vladar will be probably made available this summer, and they'll see if there's any taker. And again, uh, with the rather, rather shallow free agent pool, I think we'll see more trades. For a general manager looking to make improvements, they'll have to go the trade route instead of free agency in all likelihood. So... That's what would have to happen for Wolf to get that job, and I, I think it'll happen. I'd honestly be quite surprised if the Flames don't make room for Wolf on their in their lineup next year. They certainly don't have to. They're not under any pressure to do so, but there may be that internal pressure because Wolf's pretty darn good. Uh, then you get to Edmonton where there's a lot of head scratching, and definitely when the Carter Hart rumors got out there yesterday, um, immediately Oilers fans are like, well, they kind of have to be in on him, don't they? Maybe. Uh, if you think Campbell can have a comeback year, not necessarily. $5 million contract for Campbell through 2027. Uh, Skinner, $2.6 million till 2026. Can Skinner was was good. Um, not necessarily great for Edmonton this year, but he was very good. There's the room to grow there, but I do think that if the Oilers don't have faith that Campbell's going to bounce back, they may look elsewhere. It'd be interesting if Campbell's contract got traded to the Flyers, in some kind of a Carter Hart deal, you'd have to think there'd have to be multiple firsts involved. And then in Philadelphia, you could have a, a tandem of Peterson and uh, and Campbell next year. So if they both bounce back, you look like a genius if you're Danny Briere. And if they don't, well, uh, next year's number one draft pick could belong to Philadelphia. But we'll see what the Oilers do. Uh, again, they could just keep it that way. Ken Holland may very well dig in and say, no, I believe in these guys. Uh, for the Kings, the Kings are going to be interesting because Corpus Allo is an unrestricted free agent, but I thought he played well for them. Um, I mean, by the end of that series, the Oilers had him figured out, but the Oilers' goal scoring, they're pretty good at that, so I wouldn't necessarily read a lot into it. Uh, Copley, $1.5 million for one more year. Now, if Corpus Allo goes to market, do they bring up Portillo? And I say that because they traded for his rights. They signed him. He's under a contract worth $875,000 for another year. Then he's a restricted free agent. Do they maybe give him a shot? Um, is Copley somebody that they would believe in? Like for the LA Kings, it felt like they were winning a lot with Copley and maybe they'll believe in him for another year. If they do decide uh, not to give Corpus Allo what he's looking for and look elsewhere, 
Uh, Talbot might end up being the fit there. I, I don't know how much interest Talbot's going to generate this summer with the injuries he had this year in Ottawa. But at any rate, the LA Kings have some question marks in the net. Uh, San Jose, you have Kapil Kakinen. Uh, Kakinen, a goaltender that a couple years ago I was very much sold on and believed in, but at this point his numbers have really not turned in the, the, the right direction. Uh, $2.75 million contract for one more year. Reimers, the UFA, I think he probably hits the market. Uh, McAniemi might be the best pick for a guy from within the organization if they decide not to go out and pick anybody else up. He's a restricted free agent this summer, but again, I could have put a few different guys up there for San Jose, and I thought, ah, I'll go with McAniemi. Maybe they give him the chance at the backup job. Uh, wouldn't be the first Finnish goaltender San Jose's had, and so, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, it, and again, it really might depend on whether the team is, yeah, we're in a rebuild or no, we think we can bounce back. If they think they can bounce back and get closer to the playoffs, uh, they will likely go out and get themselves another goaltender to pair with Kakinen. Uh, for Seattle. So one of the interesting things with Seattle is going into the playoffs, was Grubauer's contract bad? Yes. Right now coming out of the playoffs, he had a really good playoff. Does it look bad? Not as bad as it did. And he's under a $5.9 million cap hit till 2027. Drieger, of course, gets buried in the minors, three and a half million dollars. He was injured most of the season. Uh, his contract's up next year. I, I mean, I, I believe that he should have the chance at the backup job. However, if you look at the AHL numbers, Decord's outplayed him. Uh, Decord UFA this summer. Maybe Joey Decord ends up being the backup in Seattle, and that's if they let Jones go to market, which I think they probably do uh, if they decide to uh, not give the, the trust to, to Drieger for the net next year. They'll probably, I would think, go out and get someone else, but we'll see. Um, Seattle's an interesting one because, again, going into the playoffs and definitely at the trade deadline, there was a lot of, well, they didn't fix their goaltending, and now it doesn't really look like they need to. Uh, Vancouver, you got Demko. Yep, I'm wearing my Demco jersey, $5 million cap hit till 2026. Uh, definitely better after coming back from injury late in the season than he was early in the season. Telling you, his numbers early in the season were definitely, at least to me, it looks like they were definitely impacted by injury. Uh, but Demco is a solid goaltender, should be top 10 in the NHL every year. Uh, Silovs, I would think, has the inside track on the backup job based on who's in the organization. Daly and Martin are both unrestricted free agents this summer. And so Silov's $786,000 uh, a year contract for just the one more year, and then he's a restricted free agent. You know, he played really well at the Worlds. He's played well in the AHL. Uh, I honestly think they should give him a shot. But that's just me. Uh, whether or not they do remains to be seen. Maybe they want him to have another year in the AHL as the starter uh, and then, you know, sign him to an extension, pass this year, and bring him up. Uh, Vegas. Vegas is going to be fascinating this summer. So first off, you have Leonard. Missed the whole year. $5 million cap hit till 2025. I haven't heard a peep about Leonard in forever. Uh, it would be, honestly, I would understand if people said, oh, right, Leonard, what's going on? Yeah. Uh, Thompson, $766,000 cap hit till 2025. That's a joke. Uh, that is that is way too low for Thompson. I hope he at least doesn't have to pay for his own uh, drinks and snacks while he's there like hopefully all everything is all free for him because that's that's a real bargain price they're getting on him and they're not a team that has a ton of bargain prices uh they're usually at or over the cap and thompson once 2025 rolls around my guess is he's going to get a really solid raise but then you got hill and brassois they're both unrestricted free agents this summer i think they'll move heaven and earth to keep hill uh i think they'd be crazy to win the stanley cup and not keep that goaltender that helped them win the stanley cup it has happened before. The last time that it happened, I think it was Antti Niemi, which I have a board set up for. There's a career video coming on Antti Niemi. Uh, so, yeah, um, I'll be fascinated to see what Vegas does here. Because, again, is, is Leonard going to play again? What's what's up What's up with that? I no idea. All right, moving on to the Central Division. Starting with Arizona and Vimelka. Vimelka's name probably will be out there. He has a $2.725 million cap hit till 2024. And then he's an unrestricted free agent. So his name may be out there this year with trade rumors. Uh, Ingram is a restricted free agent. He had a very good year for Arizona. I would think they hold on to him. And then you have Prozvatov. They played Prozvatov a bit down the stretch there. I think they want to know what they have so that if they move Vimelka, maybe you have Prozvatov and Ingram as your goaltending tandem. 
Or maybe they were trying to figure out is Prozvitov ready to be the backup and maybe you re-sign Ingram and then shop him. Either way, uh, it'd be interesting to see what they do there. In the Chicago side of things, uh, Mrazek, $3.8 million for another year. I didn't keep Staylock here. I feel like Staylock probably goes to market. Soderblom, $962.5,000 cap hit for two years. So he's a restricted free agent at the end of that. And Stauber, I had to have on the board. $883,000 cap hit uh, till next year, and then he's a restricted free agent. So both Stauber and Soderblom came up and played well enough that I would think you want another another look at them if you're Chicago. Uh, I don't think they're coming out of this rebuild this year. I think Bedard will help. Spoiler alert. I think Bedard will help the team a lot, but uh, it really is going to be a matter of, you know, do they do they play the young goalies? And I think you do. I think you play one of them, or maybe both. Maybe before the season's gone, maybe they they find a way to trade Mrazek and they go with Soderblom and Stauber, because it is it is hard to tell with Chicago. Are they are they done selling guys off? And again, Staylock could end up coming back, but uh, I I think they're probably going to look in another direction. Uh, so for Colorado, things should stay stay the same. Georgiev have three point four million dollars till twenty twenty five. Got really good value from Georgiev this year. Franco's two million dollars till twenty twenty four. You need him to stay healthy, but either way, I think that's their tandem next year. Not really much to add there, right? Dallas, you've got Ottinger and Wedgwood. That's going to be the tandem. Four million dollar cut cap hit for Ottinger till twenty twenty five. He's a restricted free agent at the end of that too. Jake's learning. He's young. Uh, had a rough playoff, and we'll see how he adjusts during the summer and and what kind of training he puts in in order to round out his game. Wedgwood, $1 million till 2024. I have no problem with Wedgwood's contract because Wedgwood's been a very solid backup for Dallas. Uh, for Minnesota, you got Marc-Andre Fleury for one more year at $3.5 million. Probably the last year of his career, I would think. Uh, but Gustafson, restricted free agent. They got to re-sign Gustafson. You absolutely have to. Uh, some of the best numbers of any goaltender in the National Hockey League this year, he's pretty darn good. You've got to find a way to keep him. And so that's your tandem. So if you're waiting for a young rookie goaltender to come up for Minnesota, one more year and then that'll probably get done. Uh, for Nashville, uh, Nashville, Saros, and Lankinen are the tandem. Still going to be the tandem. $5 million for Saros through 2025. That is absolutely a bargain contract. That is a huge bargain of a contract. And for Lankinen, it's $2 million for another year. He signed that extension before the season was done. And I think Lankinen's done really well for Nashville. I, th I think that's a, a good, solid tandem for them. They didn't miss the playoffs because of goaltending. We can put it that way. Uh, St. Louis. St. Louis, Bennington, $6 million till 2027. We have the debate about Bennington regularly on the channel. I'm not going to get into that debate here. I'm just going to say that I think Hofer will be his backup next year. $775,000 cap hit till 2025. So then he's a restricted free agent after that. So my guess is that Grice moves out, Hofer comes in, and uh, and there's your your goaltending tandem for the St. Louis Blues. Uh, it's possible they go out and find somebody else, but I, I think Hofer probably gets that backup job. Uh, Winnipeg. Winnipeg's an interesting one because I don't think Riddick is going to be back. But I didn't see anybody in the organization either that I said, all right, so that'll probably be the backup for next year. I don't see a rookie jumping in to be the backup. Plus... Hallibuck. Hallibuck may very well be on the move. $6.17 million cap hit for another year, and then he's a UFA. So if rumors are to be believed, Hallibuck may very well be on the market and could be on the move. And if they move Hallibuck, what are you doing? Like, for Winnipeg, it's a matter of they don't want to rebuild, so they're going to want a goalie back as well. And they're going to want a good goalie back as well. Um, and and there's a lot of things in Winnipeg that I think need to be fixed. I don't think the goaltending is one of them, but yeah, you don't want to lose Hellebuck for nothing. So um, the sooner they make up their mind here and the sooner they either get pen to paper with Hellebuck and get him extended or that they end up, you know, finding the right trade partner and getting him moved, I think the sooner they do that, the more they're going to get back. But we'll see because, I again, I don't think Riddick is back, but I, I don't really have a speculation on the Jets on what's going to happen from there. You guys can let me know your thoughts because I'd be I'd be interested to know what people think the Jets are going to do. Uh, next up, Atlantic Division. So we get into Boston here. Um, Olmark, $5 million cap hit till 2025. Solid contract. Absolutely a cheap contract when you look at what he's done for Boston, which is remarkable because when that contract was signed, there were plenty of doubters. However, Swayman's a restricted free agent. The Bruins don't have a lot of cap space, so I have seen some in, in Bruins fandom saying, well, they should trade Olmark. 
his value is high. The value for, for Olmark is high, but I don't think trading Olmark's the answer. Uh, I think they have to do a bridge contract to get Swayman to 2025 and then hope that in 2025 he's ready to be the starter so you can let Olmark go to market and then Swayman takes over. That, I think, should be the plan. We'll see. Buffalo. Buffalo is going to be interesting because they have Comrie under contract for one more year at $1.8 million. I would argue that I, I don't think Comrie is one of their top two goalies because you have Lukanen, $837,500 contract for one more year, and then he's a restricted free agent. And Devin Levi, uh, Levi, a hero in this city, uh, $925,000 cap hit for, just headed off that sneeze, uh, $925,000 cap hit for another two years, and he's a restricted free agent. With the amount of smoke in the air, I will not be surprised if sneezing is a problem for a while. Uh, but at any rate, yeah, uh, Lukanen and Levi, I think are, now, now it's a risky tandem because it's a young tandem, but it's also a very cheap tandem. So it puts Buffalo in an interesting position, but yeah, Comrie's contract's right there. So they are in a position where they could send one of the young goaltenders down without worrying about waivers, but um, I think Buffalo really wants to win too. So which goaltender gives them the best chance to win? We'll see what they do. Uh, Detroit's an interesting one too, because I think Nedeljkovic and Helberg probably both go to market. Uh, Huso, under contract till, till 2025 at $4.75 million a year. He was good for them. He absolutely was. Huso had some good games. Uh, do they give Casa a shot at the backup job? Do they bring somebody else in? Uh, would Martin Jones fit there? So Casa's under contract till 2026, where he becomes a restricted free agent at $863,300. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I, I don't, I'm not necessarily saying Casa will be the backup, but why not? I'm like, I, I, I know they need to win games the same as Buffalo. There are some names over here that might be able to help. But it'll be interesting to see what they do. And maybe Helberg comes back. Maybe Nedeljkovic. But I, I, I get the feeling that Nedeljkovic is probably going to at least want to hit market. If he does, I, I don't know that Detroit necessarily becomes the landing spot. Uh, for Florida, currently in the Stanley Cup final. Bobrovsky alternates between looking fantastic and looking pedestrian. Uh, but he's looked fantastic for long enough during these playoffs that, yeah, the $10 million cap hit doesn't look as bad. Uh, that's till 2026, so there's some time left on that contract. And then what do you do? So Spencer Knight, right, uh, $4.5 million till 2026. He's been in the, the Players Assistance Program, right? Um, and the $4.5 million cap hit, is it's high. That is high. That's $14.5 million for your goaltending. But the other issue is Alex Lyon's been pretty good in the playoffs when they've called on him. Lyon, I think, is a decent backup option. I think they find a way to hold on to Lyon. But... Does that not necessarily bode well for Knight? Once Knight's dealt with whatever he's dealing with, do the, do the Florida Panthers say, you know what, we could move Knight? Do they try to move Knight? Because they're going to have cap issues as well. There's been talk for the last two seasons that, well, they're going to have to move Bobrovsky for cap reasons and figure it out. I, I don't know that with this run to the final that a move where you trade Bobrovsky necessarily is all that palatable, uh, either to the team or to the fans. So it will be interesting to see what they do this summer. Montreal, you have Jake Allen and Sam Montembeau. Uh, I would love to put Carey Price on the board. I don't think Carey Price is coming back. I want to be wrong. Absolutely do. Jake Allen, $3.85 million cap hit until 2025. Uh, Montembeau, $1 million for another year. Uh, that's a deal on Montembeau, Jake Allen. Sometimes it looks like a deal, sometimes not necessarily. Kind of ends up in the middle there. Uh, but again, with Montreal, I do think they'd like to make Caden Primo the backup at some point. I, I, I guess it's not going to be this year unless they decide to move Allen. Uh, I don't think Montembeau's going anywhere. From what Montreal's said publicly, it sounds like Montembeau's the guy they really want to invest in and see what more he's able to do. And it's only a million dollar cap hit. So that's a cheap, you know, investigative process to go through when your goaltender's only cost you a million dollars. And again... Maybe Primo's ready to be the backup. His NHL numbers haven't been that encouraging, though. I'd, I'd honestly, just if I had to predict, feet to the fire, Alan and Montembeau are still the tandem in the fall. That's my guess. Um, now it won't. Now they won't even be the tandem next week. But anyways, Ottawa, Forsberg under contract, $2.75 million till 2025. Forsberg's been good value. Sogard and Mandelisi, one or the other is going to be the backup, I would think. Uh, Sogard, I would give the inside track, $925,000 cap hit. 
Uh, but RFA. RFA at this point. Um, and Mandalizi, RFA. So we'll see what happens here. Um, or no, Sogard has, I think, one more year left at $925,000. And then he's a UF or RFA next summer. Uh, Mandalizi is a restricted free agent right now. So we'll see. Uh, if Ottawa wants to get back to the playoffs, if they're really serious about that, there's been talk about whether or not they'll be in on Carter Hart. And they could honestly make a really good pitch for Carter Hart if they wanted to. They have a lot of good young players. They have a lot of draft capital. There's a lot there for Philadelphia if they're really and truly in a rebuild that would work for them. So, yeah, I understand why Ottawa fans immediately said, we'll take Carter Hart. Carter Hart's numbers are very good. And if he gets traded, I can absolutely get into that. And if you look at the advanced stats on Carter Hart, and I think advanced stats are more useful with goaltenders than with forwards and defensemen. Just personally, I've found that. Um, and and so I, I think the, the numbers would show you that Hart's a pretty good goaltender. Arguably top 10. Not really top 5, but you could, you could argue him into the top 10. Um, except for penalty killing. Again, I'll get into that uh, when, if that happens. Uh, and then you get to uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning. So for Tampa Bay, Vasilevsky, $9.5 million cap hit until 2028. Nobody dislikes that contract, right? Good, good, because he's still arguably the best goaltender in the league. Arguably because if I said he's the best goaltender in the league, there'd be a lot of gnashing of teeth and just upset people. At any rate... Uh, all in the felt, I think has the inside track on the backup job, uh, unless they go out and they look for another veteran Elliot's contracts up this summer, uh, $850,000 for all in the felt for one more year. And then he's a restricted free agent. So, I mean, at some point in time, you have to give a look to young goaltenders and say, right, do we have, have faith in this guy as maybe being the next guy or at least being the backup. So we'll see what Tampa Bay does this summer. Toronto, uh, the most popular buyout right now in cap friendly is Matt Murray. There's a reason. If Toronto buys out Matt Murray, it does benefit them, and they're a team that definitely has some cap issues. So Matt Murray, $4.6 million cap hit for another year. And with the new general manager and Brad Tree living, uh, the, the the good feeling of Matt Murray and, and Kyle Dubas, that's 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 gone by the wayside at this point. So and I say that because Murray and Dubas had a had a you know a relationship that predated him coming to Toronto. So we'll see if that ends Murray's time here. Uh, Sam Sanov, restricted free agent. He's going to want to get a raise. It's part of the reason why buying out Murray is a popular idea right now. And Wall played well enough that fans want to see him in the Toronto lineup. A $766,000 cap hit until 2025. And he's a restricted free agent in 2025 as well. So, yeah, with Wall, he may very well be the goaltender along with Sam Sanov. Is that a winning tandem? Is a question we're going to hear a lot this summer if that's the direction Brad Tree Living heads in. But again, with a brand new GM, who knows? Maybe he goes out and gets Vladar. Maybe he's like, you know what? I trust Vladar from Calgary. Brings in Vladar, puts him with Samsonov, and gives Wall another year in the minors. Well, again, just throwing that out there is a possibility. And uh, rounding out the Atlantic Division with that. All right. And getting into the Metro Division, Kachetkov. Very likely to be one of the two goaltenders for Carolina. Carolina usually rolls two goalies. Uh, $2 million cap hit for Kachetkov till 2027, which looks like a bargain, comparatively speaking, to what he did for them this year when he did play. So who do they bring back? So both Anderson and Ranta are UFAs this summer. Carolina's never been shy about making big changes in net. It's never really been something Don Waddell shied away from. I think Ranta's the cheaper of the two options. Anderson's the better of the two options. It really comes down to which direction they want to head in. Do they want Ranta? Do they want Anderson? Both of them have had injury histories that are pretty lengthy. So that I don't think one has an edge on the other there necessarily. But if it comes down to cost, Ranta's the cheaper of the two. If you believe Kochetkov is going to be the starter, Ranta would probably be the best way to go. If you want to ease Kochetkov into that role, if you're not worried about spending a little bit more money, Freddie Anderson becomes the guy. So we'll see what they do. Uh, Columbus, Merzlikens, $5.4 million cap hit till 2027. Rough year for Merzlikens. You look at expected goals against, uh, his numbers were amongst or at the bottom of the league. And that's something he has to turn around. Tarasov, it feels like, is set up now to be the next guy. $1.05 million cap hit till 2025. He's a restricted free agent there. So in trading out Corpus Allo, Tarasov now has that opening for the backup job. Should have it next next year. 
uh, and we'll see how things go for Columbus. I think the expectation is you don't pick up Provorov because you're in a in a rebuild. Uh, you've got Goudreau now on year two of a nice, long, pretty rich contract. Columbus needs to bounce back quickly. Um, so if there's any concern about the goaltending from Yarmo Kekalainen, they might be in on Carter Hart as well. Uh, New Jersey, Vanacek, $3.4 million till 2025. Had an up and down season. More ups, I thought, than downs. Uh, very likely back. And I think Schmid earned a job. $850,000 for one more year is his cap hit. And then there's Blackwood. So do you keep Vanacek or do you keep Blackwood? Blackwood's a restricted free agent this summer. So I'll be very interested to see what happens with Blackwood. Um, and whether they just trade his signing rights. Do you sign him and trade him? Do you sign him and then trade Vanacek? Uh, because, again, I think Akira Schmid showed he's, he's ready. He's ready to be an NHL goalie. And may very well be the best of the three goaltenders. So for New Jersey, a team that's a contender right now and wants to become a favorite later, Schmidt might be the guy. And so, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do this summer between Blackwood and Vanacek. Um, I would lean towards keeping Vanacek, but Blackwood still does have some potential there, although he's had so many injuries over the last couple of years. We'll see. Uh, for the Islanders, Sorokin, $4 million cap hit for one more year. He's going to get a raise next summer. He's going to get a healthy raise next summer. Sorokin, still, I think, underrated. Uh, not as underrated as he was, say, a couple years ago, but still underrated. And so I think Sorokin's going to play about 55, 60 games again. Uh, Varlamov, they want to keep him. He wants to come back, but does he come back? So he's 35 years of age. He's an unrestricted free agent this summer. Are any of the names on this side of the board necessarily an upgrade? Not, not really. However, um, when it comes to goaltending, Lou hasn't been scared of making changes either. Um, not necessarily to the same extent as what we've seen in Carolina. But yeah, when Leonard's contract was up, he had no problem with letting him go. At a time where Leonard was having uh, playing some of the best hockey of his career, and it looked crazy to let Leonard go, and it worked out. Uh, Vorlamov was even coming off of kind of a down year at the time that the Islanders picked him up, and it worked. So if they decide, you know, well, what he wants is more than what we're willing to give, I think they'll be just fine going with Sorokin and whoever replaces Varlamov. If they bring back Varlamov, great. Uh, then you get the Rangers. Similar situation with the Rangers. Uh, Shesterkin, $5.66 million contract till 2025. That's a bargain. That's that's a bargain for Igor, who's fantastic. Uh, Halaxa UFA, if he wants to come back, I think they'll figure out a way to make it happen. Um, but, you know, at this point in time in, in Halak's career, I, I don't know. Does he retire? So with Halak, there are some names on this side that I think could work. Uh, one thing I would say, too, with the Islanders, you want a, you want a, a project that might work? Get Nadelkovic with the Islanders, and odds are the goalie coach sits down and figures it out, and all of a sudden Nadelkovic is one of the better goalies in the league because that's kind of what the Islanders do with goaltenders. But the Rangers, uh, we'll see if there's any magic with them in the event that Halak does go to market. Do you promote from within, or do you go out and find another backup? You probably go out and find another veteran backup, I would think. Uh, and then you've got Philadelphia, and it's kind of a mess. With acquiring Cal Peterson, if they intend to play Peterson, uh, there's there's somebody who ends up being the odd man out. Now, Carter Hart, $3.98 million cap hit for one more year. He's a restricted free agent next summer. That's a bargain for Carter Hart. Carter Hart, very good goaltender. He gets a lot of blame for the, the, the horrible play of, of some of the defense in front of him. Uh, but if you look at his numbers, five on five, you look at and you look at the advanced numbers everywhere except penalty killing, he's excellent. He's very, very good. The penalty killing numbers are scary bad. So either he's not good during the penalty kill or the team in front of him is bad during the penalty kill or yes. So you could say, yeah, that's kind of a both situation. I won't argue with you on it at all. Uh, but then you got the interesting dilemma because they've added Peterson's contract. Do they intend to play him? Do they intend to bury him in the AHL? Uh, Sandstrom, $775,000 for another year. And Erson, $859,000 cap hit for another year before he becomes a restricted free agent. Sandstrom's a year away from unrestricted free agency. Erson, I think, played well. And I, I honestly think that Tortorella kind of liked Erson as well. He kept playing him. Uh, in games where I thought he was going to go with a different goalie. But yeah, Harrison was still the guy. So um, I kind of think that if Hart's gone, you go with Harrison and Sandstrom or Harrison and Peterson. Or Peterson. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I don't know. 
is Philly done? And if Philly moves Hart, do they look to bring a goaltender back in that trade? Uh, so yeah, it, it, they'll be a fascinating one to watch this summer too, because there's a lot of different guys that could end up being the goalie, including one that's not in their part of the board right now, Pittsburgh. So one of the big jobs for, for Dubas as president of hockey operations is to figure out the goaltending. Dismiss there for another year, $1.8 million. Uh, then he's an unrestricted free agent. Jari's an unrestricted free agent this summer. And the comment's been, well, if there's something better on the market, we may look in that direction. If Jari's our best option, we'll go with him. It's not a ringing endorsement. It's just, you know, if your girlfriend says, well, I'm going to look at the market and see if there's a better boyfriend. And if not, our relationship shall continue. It's not ringing endorsement. Um, and it's kind of mean. Anyways, um, not that that's ever happened to me. But the available on the market uh Talbot is the one that kind of stands out that maybe he has a bounce back year but if you go from Jari to Talbot again hard to argue that as an upgrade and then outside of that you've got Jones again he had an excellent record with Seattle his safe percentage started out pretty good and then got kind of nightmarish uh and then outside of that you've got projects or you've got a guy like Anthony Stolars out of a pretty good year for Anaheim uh but there isn't really anybody that jumps off the page at you so unless Pittsburgh could somehow put together a package to pick up Hellebuck from Winnipeg, um, which would be quite the boost for their goaltending if they were able to do that. I have no idea how. Um, I don't think Carter Hurt goes to Pittsburgh. I don't think the Pennsylvania teams make that trade with one another. Uh, even though Philadelphia is in a rebuild, I don't know if Flyer fans would be ready to see Carter Hart go to Pittsburgh and, and excel. And we know he would. We know that if Carter Hart would go to Pittsburgh, that all of a sudden he'd be fantastic and Pittsburgh's one of the top teams. And then it would all come back to... So, Danny Briere got a good deal in that Provorov trade, but, uh, man, giving up on Carter Hurt like that. But at any rate, uh, we'll see what Pittsburgh does. And I, I would think Jari probably sticks around, but we're getting closer and closer to the market. And when you're getting closer and closer to, to the market, it might be in the best interest of players just to go. So, basically, you say, you know what? I'd like to return to Pittsburgh if you're Jari. But I'll check the market price and see what see what they see what they value me at, and then you might get an extra million or two million dollars a year out of Pittsburgh as a result. And then you got Washington. Washington looks set. One thing with the Washington Capitals, they look set. Uh, Kemper five point two five million dollars till twenty twenty seven. He was very good for them. He's not the reason they missed the playoffs. And Lindgren one point one million dollars till twenty twenty five. Charlie Lindgren played well for them too when called upon. So. Really, Washington has no need to go out and find themselves another goaltender this year. I think they did quite well. Uh, and then when you get into the likely available, uh, Martin Jones stands out. Cam Talbot stands out as potential backups, right? Uh, although Talbot may want to split the net at the very least. Remember, part of the reason he was out of Minnesota was because it was obvious Fleury was going to be the starter. Um, Delia. Delia had some good starts for Vancouver, but by the end of the season, yeah, he he it was clear that Vancouver would be better off going with Seelovs next year. Uh, Staylock, good year in Chicago. May very well return to Chicago. Maybe they try to trade Mrazek instead. Uh, Grice, Grice on the older side of things, uh, coming off of a bit of a down year with St. Louis. Uh, Stolarz, as I said, good year for him. Helberg, I was glad to see him get some games in Detroit, but probably not going to get a top two job. Odds are if he signs with an NHL team, It'll probably be in a number three spot with him, you know, eyeing hopefully getting a number a top two spot. Uh, Nadelkovic could be a good reclamation project for somebody He's young enough that I think there's teams that would be interested in his services. And then Hudobin's on the board. His contract running out. He was Chicago property to end out the season. But I think Hudobin's career as a National Hockey League goaltender probably at an end, which is sad. But uh, yeah, so there you go. You guys are all caught up on all 32 teams. It's a fun thing to look at before we get into the free agency and all the craziness that that brings. And there will be a lot of craziness come free agent season. But uh, yeah, it is always interesting to see where the goalies land. Let me know your predictions. Predict where the goalies land. Who's going to pick up Carter Hart? Just go ahead. Go crazy. Um, and again, uh, I, I, I understand Philadelphia uh, maybe looking into trading Hart. But... Yeah, you've got to really hit that one out of the park because I, I think Carter Hurt has that potential. He's very young. I think one of the things people forget with Carter Hurt is he came into the league very young as well. And so it makes us feel like he's been around forever and he's probably one of those veterans. But he is, he's much younger than I think a lot of people realize. And so there's still that potential for him to get better 
and become one of the best goalies in the league. At the very least, like I said, if you look at the advanced stats outside of the penalty kill, he's a top 10 goalie and that's not bad. But let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.